Okay, hey everybody, gonna be posting this with the page real quick. So hang tight with me. And we have we have it posted to the page. Yay. Okay. Now today I'm going to be doing a classic Thor. Hey Eddie, how you doing, man? Um going to be doing a classic Thor today uh, because of the fact that not uh, not in conjunction with the movie coming out. It's just because I wanted to do it and I hadn't done it yet. And um, some people have been requesting it. So I thought, well, why not? But um, that's about the extent of it. <laughs> Seriously. Um, been working on the new release for my book. And... Uh, wanted to make this one really quick so I did a nice close-up uh, got the classic helmet in kind of put in the wings and all that and um, I just thought it would be nice to do something a little different you know and uh, the Thor in the movies has bugged me since day one not that it's a bad film set or anything like that because I think they're awesome I, I really do I'm a huge fan I think they're they're great but the Disney Thor in the films always reminded me of uh, Thunderstrike from the uh, from the the alternative comic books that uh, Thor lost his power, was found unworthy, uh, and then Eric uh, Masterson, the character, the human form that Thor resides in, uh, or at least resided in for a while. Because back then he had to have a host alternative. He was kind of parasitic, which was weird when you think about it. Um, he had to live with it within a human being when he got banished to Earth. But um, anyway, Eric became Thor. And he became a, a, what was supposed to be a temporary Thor. Until someone with the power um, and worth of Thor was found. So they spun off that character. And now what we have with Ragnarok version is pretty much Thunderstrike incarnated. Um, where he got the, you know, the um, you guys have seen the commercials. I'm trying not to spoil anything because I haven't seen the film either. But I don't want to spoil it from what I do know ahead of time. But what I will say is this. The Raiden from Mortal Kombat style glowing eyes and, you know, the power coming from within. And as you've seen in the... Uh, the previews and the trailers, the uh, busted hammer, you know, and him losing his power for a little bit and whatnot, and it had to come from within, from his own spirit of Thor and all that. Well, all of that is Thunderstrike, every bit of it. Um, after that happened, Thor was uh, a spirit trapped within Eric as the power source, but not the, uh, not free to roam and convert like he was for the longest time and eventually they split and uh, fought each other for the power and it was pretty interesting it was a great storyline but the continuity is just all over the place you know I've talked to many people about the continuity for it it's just nuts but uh, for this purpose that's exactly what we were looking at when we saw the Thor and Ragnarok you know that's that is that Thor and I just always thought that was neat the way they did that for, you know, Marvel's adaptation. But at the same time, though, it was, you know, Marvel's or Disney screaming, well, this is an original version. You know, this is our movie universe version of Thor. And it's just like, really? Everything in there is just completely revamped, rehashed and left alone. But, you know, like I said, I'm not knocking it because I really dig the Thor character. And uh, he's got the Thor car uh, sarcasm, kind of like Drax from uh, Guardians. You know, uh, it's it's a dry humor, but it still comes and goes. So uh, it has a purpose. And in these films, it's making a really, really good, solid presentation from what I understand. But uh, I haven't found one I don't like yet. But... Uh, 
we'll see what happens. But anyway, I, I just didn't want to draw, you know, the whole bearded version with uh, the whatnot going on, you know, because it's just, eh, it's been done to death. And for me, that's not Thor. That was a temporary problem where he lost his uh, his edge and almost killed a bunch of people. And that's when he got ripped apart and became Thunderstrike. And if you don't know that story or that comic book, um, it's not the little ninja masked guy in the red and black suit that uh, they have in the Marvel Now universe. It's a bearded version of Thor. I mean, what you see in Helmsworth in Ragnarok is pretty much uh, the <laughs> the character come off the page. But like I said, that's the whole purpose of me not doing the bearded version of Thor that everybody knows right now from the cinematic universe. I just didn't want to do that and be stuck in, you know, uh, movie Thordom, for a lack of a better word. So <laughs> maybe I maybe I can hashtag that. Maybe it'll be a maybe it'll trend movie Thordom. And um, I, I'm just having a blast drawing this stuff without having to worry about all of that mess, you know. So, that's where we're at. That's where that came from. And uh, if you guys are wondering why I didn't draw, you know, you're just like, you're drawing the old one. I, I've had a lot of young people come to me and say that. It's just like, no, I'm drawing the original. So, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm surprised I haven't drawn him sooner. So, hey, Mr. Jim, how's it going, buddy? But yeah, I'm really shocked that I hadn't drawn him sooner. <clears throat> as we're almost, what, right at 200 cards in so far? You'd have thought that under that past time I'd have, <laughs> I'd have caught him sooner. But that's okay. Because uh, a lot of great characters in there. A lot of neat stuff. And I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Mr. Jim O'Reilly, uh, if you guys are checking this out uh, in the replay or... Uh, over on YouTube, let me tell you something. Mr. Jim O'Reilly is a card artist. The dude is professional. He's slick. And he has done some awesome, awesome stuff over there. I love watching him do his wood burning stuff because that's crazy, man. He takes these original wood planks and burns comic characters into them like, um, or actually any, any character pretty much um, in these new sets that he's got for The Walking Dead and a couple other things, Star Wars and a few other things he's got going on, and it's just crazy, man. And he's very, very humble. He he probably eats himself quite a bit. So, oh, I know this sucks, blah, 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 and it's great. It's just phenomenal. <laughs> That's just how Jim is, though. Dude's awesome. Very good friend to have on your side, too. And by the way, if you didn't notice, this was just coincidence. Um, I have a Thor... Band-Aid on my finger here, and I'm trying to not point rudely. Um, it was just coincidence that I happened to do it. Um, my daughter's cat was playing. He hopped on me and um, was playing last night. And well, before I even knew it, I didn't even feel him stick my finger. Uh, then there was blood everywhere, and we had to take care of that. But... He has, he's Mancun, he's very large. Um, I'm not particularly a cat person, but I like the dude. He's all right. He's growing on me. And um, <clears throat> he doesn't cause my lab any grief, so I'm good. But uh, anyway...
He makes my daughter happy. That's cool. Cool by me. Cool by me. Um, but yeah, that's just coincidence that I had the Thor Band-Aid. I tell you what, though. You know, people uh, tend to pick on me when I have these things on because it's like, why are you wearing a kid Band-Aid? Get a real man's Band-Aid. And I'm like, oh, really? You take it that serious, man? It's just a Band-Aid. But I love wearing them. I tell you what, it beats the heck out of my little pony. So I frequently keep a box around because I, I paper cut myself all the time. And it's it's ridiculous um, how often I do that. Because I work with boards and stuff and paper and whatnot. And these little things will nick the fire out of me all the time. But, um, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, on uh, the Facebook groups this morning, it was funny because most of the day, everybody's been complaining, you know, acting like they're experts on Jack Kirby and um, and Stan Lee here lately because of the, the Kirkman uh, Secrets of Comic Books or whatever it is, that show that was on uh, AMC after The Walking Dead the other night. And it premieres on Mondays. I'm not getting paid to say that. I'm just saying when it is. Uh, it it pre Each episode premieres now on their stable time for Monday. And uh, I haven't watched the Wonder Woman one yet. But um, I find that stuff fascinating. And I'm, I'm a history buff when it comes to that. I love to study things like that. And um, everybody now thinks that they all know Jack Kirby and they, they all know um, Stan Lee and They've all got the best approach of, you know, the story and whatnot. And, you know, because that was supposed to be the biggest rivalry in comics and da-da-da-da-da. And, eh, I, I, I have my own opinions about that, and I leave that alone where it is. Because, you know, at the end of the day, um, a buddy of mine and I were talking about it. And, you know, at the end of the day, the funny thing is, is that Marvel owns it all anyway. It's just kind of a, a high courtesy that they let artists and creators take claim to uh, to that fan ground anyway. And the cool part about it is, is because of the fact that, you know, fans started to resonate with the artwork of these artists. And Stan Lee was the one that gave them social position in the first place. No matter what you believe about Kirby and, and Lee's differences of creation, because I'll tell you firsthand, I think they co-created a lot of that stuff and Stan didn't take it. But that's as far as I'm going to say on it. You know, he gave, uh, he didn't give credit where it was due in most cases. And I totally agree with that aspect. But at the, day, at the end of the day, though, it was all freelance, uh, you know, work to hire. So nobody has any credit or say in it anyway because of the fact that, you know, it's all for the company. And that's unfortunate uh, that it went down that way. But now everybody's on, you know, it's like a political thing, which I'm not going to go into either. No matter what you believe, agree, agree with or disagree with, leave that alone. Uh, I'm just saying, I, I think it's funny because, you know, it's like a new, a new political boom. And it's all about comics at this point for our universe, you know, our little neck of the woods, as it were, for uh, everything going on. And I think it's just hilarious you guys don't unfriend people and don't um, cut people off because <clears throat> you agree you know your your team lee or your team kirby you know or whatever don't cut people off because i've seen people unfriend each other a lot today and it's ridiculous that you cut people off because of disagreements like that but you know i mean if they're being a butt about it you know and that's a technical term if they're being a jerk about it or a butt about it and won't shut up and let it drop until you agree to what their circumstances or view is, that's a totally different and understandable uh, reason for departing from that relationship. <clears throat> but, you know, <clears throat> and I can see both sides of Kirby and uh, <clears throat> Lee's position, you know, because I've been ripped off in, in – internet marketing, digital marketing, social media marketing. Um, I've been ripped off by people I've worked with and they've taken credit for things that I did and they know they did. 
and yet they can't continue on their their work without me because they can't do what I did. So, you know, bite me. But in comics, I've seen the same thing. You know, people will try to steal stuff. They'll steal credits or stories or whatever. And, um, you know, you got to be careful with that stuff. And just kind of keep everything in contract, keep it under under perspective. And just remember, you know, if you're worth the hire, just do your job, claim the book, you know, claim the book, claim the fame, and move on. But uh, but if you're a company and you're sh- you know you're shining people on, uh, if you're a publisher, you got to be more careful with that because you know you got to do what's right. And uh, I had the opportunity to take over a client's character because of the fact that. Uh, he hired me, work to hire, and then put it in the contract himself that, you know, I've mentioned this before, that uh, I own the book. I mean, he gave me the book and gave me the characters. And I haven't taken legal possession of those things yet, which I don't intend to. I shouldn't even say yet because I'm not going to, um, you know, I mean, unless he comes back and bites me somehow, I don't see that being a problem. But uh, I have no interest in his character other than drawing it. <clears throat> but he skimped out on some money for me and tried to cheat me out of a contract and uh, tried not to pay me. And I did threaten to take it off. You know, I, I threatened to take the book as payment because of the fact that he put it in the contract and I told him it was there from the get-go and that he may wanted to correct it, and he didn't. And I was just like, man, you know, that's not good. But he's like, I trust you. I'm like, you don't need to trust anybody. You need to contract. This is our first time working together. You don't know me from Adam. But yet, <clears throat> he could trust me because I didn't rip him off. But, uh, you know, that was one of those things. I could have gone dirty with that just like any uh, anybody else that's done that to me in the past. People are weird like that. You know? <clears throat> You have to be very cautious and careful. People will come after you and burn you like that. But, um, you know, everybody's ranting and raving about, old Jack got screwed by Stan and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, what? You know, we'll never know what, what, was, what agreement was signed. We'll never know what understanding they had. We'll never know except what, you know, these, these shows and stuff want to leak out and show us. And granted, I totally agree that there was a conflict there. I mean, I'm not naive to it at all. Obviously, there was a conflict and a problem because Ditko and Kirby left. But in that same respect, though, we we will never know what's going on. And, you know, everybody knows Jack created the Silver Surfer. Everybody knows Jack created all that, you know, those designs. And so did Steve. Uh, You know, he created the uh, original design of Spider-Man. But doesn't get creation credit for that, even though he co-created him. You know, I guarantee you Rob Liefeld does for, you know, creating um, Deadpool. And that's, it's because of that issue and notoriety of that issue that we had that whole thing. But it all started with, with, you know, the Bill Finger and Bob Kane issue with Batman. That's where the real rivalry started. And it was way even before that. So, you know, if, if you want to, you know, be Team Kirby, be Team Kirby. If you want to be team, team Lee, be Team Lee, that's fine. But uh, relax a little bit because it's something we'll never know, you know. It's the new uh, political debate, I think. You know, um, a lot of people are getting bent about it and stuff, and it's just you can't change it, so relax. Don't ruin a friendship over it or, you know, I mean, I know Facebook is Facebook, but still, um, I have a lot of people I I talk with every day and I consider real friends here because I'm okay with that and I've never met them face to face. But again, I'm all right with that because of the fact that I made that decision and a choice. However, there are those that would uh, go hostile with it. And go weird, and that's okay, if that's their thing. <clears throat> but all I'm saying is, is be, be nice, be nice, be nice, be nice. 
stop unfriending people because you got a disagreement. It's weird. Social media, by definition, is to be social. <clears throat> Clearing my throat there. A little bit of an allergy spill. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. You're okay. So, it cracks me up because people freak out about the littlest things, you know. It's my world and you just get to sit on my Facebook. <laughs> they take crap way too seriously. You know, I've had clients do that too. Uh, people freak out. And it's like, you know, is my book going to make it? Is my book going to make it? And I'm like, I don't know. Put it out there and see. If you do what I tell you to do, it's going to make it. So, but I've worked with best-selling authors and had, you know, New York Times bestsellers and been burned a few times because I established their social media stuff and then they just vanish. You know, everybody's really ripped off. Everybody knows what it's like. Everybody's been hurt by somebody like that. <clears throat> they've had, you know, people they've helped and trained and colleagues they've worked with and take under their wing and get and show them the ropes. And then, you know, these knuckleheads go, well, I've got all the info now. Ha ha. Bye bye. And they run off. And I see that in comics a lot. You know, I'll see, well, you know, I'm going to train you how to do this and I'm going to, I'm going to help you out. And then, you know, when you give the method of whatever you're teaching, somebody goes off and runs off with it and makes a book about it or a video about it. And then you're screwed. What? So I find that fascinating. It's just like, why not do your own thing, you know? Or at least pay homage to the person that gave it to you. I do that a lot. I'll take, I'll take content that I know from other people, and I'll ask their permission to use it. And then I'll let them, you know, have credit for it. <clears throat> I've done that many times on this show, you know. And then you'll see stuff like... Um, like, uh, oh, you'll just see like an, a super old book that's in, you know, um, default now or that person's passed on or whatever, you know, Napoleon Hill here and there, that kind of thing and whatnot. And <clears throat> it's been reproduced 80,000 times in whatever form, you know, public domain or whatever it comes to at that point. But I say stuff like that all the time. I'll mention it in books and stuff. I've got one coming out here soon that's got uh, some material from him in it. And it's just... You know, you just market it and say, okay, this is this is where I learned this, and this is the expert that I got that from, and this is my professional take on it, you know, and you move forward. <clears throat> but you look like an idiot if you go off and say, you know, this is my stuff, and you're blatantly plagiarizing people. It's just ridiculous. But don't be the next, you know, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, poor combo, you know? If you decide you want to work with somebody, work with them. <clears throat> but don't take my word for it. I, I, I know nothing. So, <laughs> i just been doing that same thing for the last 20 years. That same line of work, so I know nothing. Let's see here. How's this going? I got kind of, kind of a... <clears throat> An Art Thibert thing going with the with the costume back here, with the cape, which I find really fascinating, because of the fact that he's a huge, huge influence on me, especially with the Thor stuff. Loved his work back then. Walt Simonson was even more so. Dude was awesome. Very cool. So I'm going to 
bridge this up a little bit with these with these little feathers and uh, <clears throat> pop them out with a little detail here. I know I'm getting a little gravelly. It's all right. Now the cool thing with these feathers is what you want to do is you want to go in about every third one and give it a, a heavy weight on the bottom and just give it a heavy line. That way it looks like it's popped out. I like down here on the bottom, just going like this, show the heavy weight of the feathers. Like that. <clears throat> just when you're doing it, be sure you don't go, you know, you don't go down the line and go one, two, three, skip, one, two, three. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it systematically the way you do it, uh, sequential, because then it'll make it look funny. Darkening up this hair a little bit. And you know what? I need to erase that. I need to erase that because when I drew in the hammer, I went ahead and drew in the link, uh, the uh, links there for the uh, disc. We forgot to put in the other side of the hair. Oh my gosh, I forgot. Yeah, Goldilocks would get mad at me. You forgot thy hair. And I know that's not right either, but <clears throat> a Shakespearean, I'm not so. All in good fun. It's just comics. Don't get bent. Don't get bent. Now, there we go. Cool. Now he's got a little bit of hair on both sides. Yay. So we're going to go down here and uh, shade this in. Like I said, we're going classic. So instead of doing most of this uh, open for blue, the way the guys used to do it was they used to blacken most of it out and give it blue highlights. Blue highlights, blue highlights. We like saying blue highlights. So, yep, blue highlights. <clears throat> I'm going to go right down here on this scene. And I'm going to go back over here. Sorry, I'm moving this around so much. It's just I've got to keep, stay off those massive pieces of graphite, you know, these massive blacks, because I don't want to mess this up. And the last thing I want is big smudge knuckle prints across it as I stick my finger right in the graphite anyway. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, we're going to make kind of a pattern here. So I'm going to want that blue anyway. Like right across here. Ding. It's got kind of an awesome venom thing going on because um, it's got that blue rim light. So we're going to knock this out. I got in touch with uh, my buddy Rusty Gilligan, which is going to do a pinup for me very soon for one of my upcoming books, which I'm very pleased about. Not disclosing which one yet, because of the fact that uh, we want to keep it as, as uh, clean and simple as a surprise for you guys as possible. Uh, you know, even though I did just mention it, I did that on purpose. Now, I'm going to go old school here because this is supposed to be like leather or something like that or a thick cloth. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to black this out. 
I'm not even going to mess with detailing it. I'm just going to black it out. Because the original Thor was mostly, his tunic was mostly black with blue highlights because of this effect that it made with the whole texturing thing when it was blacked out. Now I had this one one pose that I knocked out right before, but I switched it to this one. Um, it just didn't, I don't know, it didn't have a, the feel I wanted. So uh, it was a full body shot. And it, it made him super tiny on the card. So I was just like, no, I'm not going to do that. Because um, not that I want anybody looking at it, but when I did the um, Doc Ock, which is one of my least favorite cards in the series. He was so, so tiny in that card uh, because I did a full color, I, I, or full color, geez, full body shot. Did a full body shot on him. So, and he was just so tiny. There we go. Cool deal. Now, I'm going to accent these discs just a little. I think it was Stybert that did this whenever he did it. He would come in and put in these real weird squiggles right here at the bottom. Um, I'm not sure if Simonson did it or not, but I know... Um, I know Art did. He used to make these want to look like glass, so he would, or shiny at the very least. So he would come in and mark them up like this, kind of like that. So I think, matter of fact, I think we've got, we've about got Thor here. I think we've got him covered. I want to strengthen up that jaw with a shadow, just a little undertone right there. Very clean. I like it. So, hope you guys dig that. Um, that's where we're at today with this card. I, I'm going to keep it and leave it right there. And uh, I'm going to ink this bad boy up this afternoon and <clears throat> hopefully get it colored tomorrow sometime. Uh I know I said Spawn would be today. I, I did get asked about that. I know Spawn was today, but the thing was, um, I just, it was just like that pre-Thor that pre -Thor card that I was just talking about when I did the layout. I just could not get him to, um, to come out smooth like I wanted, and it just wasn't a day for it. So I apologize for that for everybody that wanted Spawn today. Uh, I will do something uh, later in the week, hopefully tomorrow. And I'll post something, you know, early so that we can see that. Uh, also, I have uh, King Kong and Godzilla coming this weekend, just so you guys do know. Uh, right before, the last weekend before the holidays, matter of fact. Because um, <clears throat> this weekend will be the last free weekend um, before Thanksgiving. And I will be... Uh, I, I will be with family and stuff, but I'll still do a card nonetheless because of the fact that I want to get that going and I want to stick to the record. So uh, I appreciate it with you guys hanging out. Thanks for spending some time with me today, and we're going to get this knocked out for tomorrow. Uh, I'll, I'll try to do a spawn uh, sometime this afternoon or early in the morning and post it up so you guys can see it. And then um, I might even give a glimpse of the, like I said, the, the Kong and Zilla page that I've got sitting over here to the side that I keep talking about. But uh, anyway, back to the grind. I appreciate it. I got some comics to make and some books to put out and stuff and uh, some marketing material to send out this afternoon. So uh, thanks very much, guys. Catch you tomorrow.